Ready? Yes. Good evening. My name is Catherine Porter. As chair of the Alarms Design Review Board, I'm calling this meeting to order. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 17, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law uh, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, the public hearing of the Town of Amherst Design Review Board is being conducted in, via remote uh, participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but the public can attend tonight's a virtual meeting by using the Zoom login information provided on the meeting agenda listed on the meeting calendar, which is provided on the Town of Amherst website. We will begin with a roll call of the members of the Design Review Board who have been impaneled for the consideration of the items on tonight's agenda. Board members, please say aye or yes to acknowledge your attendance for the record. Lindsay Schnarr. Hi. Tom Long. Present. Catherine Davis. <clears throat> yes. Erica Zikos. Yes. Okay. At this uh, time, I would ask if there are any disclosures that you would like to make relevant to the uh, agenda items tonight. Okay. Also in attendance is Maureen Pollock, planner and staff liaison to the design review board. The Design Review Board and its accompanying zoning regulations were created by a town meeting in October of 1983. The charge and purpose of the Design Review Board under Section 3.2 of the Zoning Bylaw is to preserve and enhance the town's cultural, economic, and historical resources by providing for a detailed review of all changes in land use, the appearance of structures, and the appearance of sites which may affect these resources. The Design Review Board exercises this responsibility by providing design review and recommendations to private applicants and permit granting boards within specific overlay zoning districts in the town center, the design review overlay district, and the town common design review overlay districts. Design review was also provided for town departments and permit granting boards with respect to town projects anywhere in Amherst, which will result in substantial alteration to the form or appearance of a structure or site. All design review board meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. Each meeting recording will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel for public viewing. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the meeting after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its question, the board will deliberate. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon recommendations for each respective application. Once the board has voted on its recommendation, the staff liaison will type up the recommendations for distribution to the applicant board applicable land use board and building recommend recommendation. Tonight's agenda <clears throat> for Tuesday, March 8th is as followed. And I think we have, there we go. Uh, the first application is DRB FY 2022-17 Amherst Oyster Bar. And we're reviewing the proposed changes to the color of the existing walls, light fixtures, railings, and front door, installation of new signage, installation of white translucent pri privacy vinyl across the front glass of building, and removal of the existing awnings for the Amherst Oyster Bar, a new restaurant under section 3.20 of the zoning bylaw. Okay, and so uh, Maureen, who do we have? Are we ready to, okay, there we go. Yes, so we have uh, Dylan here. Who, um, Dylan, if you could state your name and your affiliation and then um, <clears throat> explain your proposal and you can uh, share your screen and just show your proposal as well. Great. Thank you, Maureen. Yes, uh, my name is Dylan Barstow-Mans uh, and I'm here on behalf of the Amherst Oyster Bar. Uh, 
to present a new design that we will have for the outside. And just want to thank you guys for having this meeting tonight. Uh, let me get my screen shared here. We have Gabrielle Gu. Uh, Gabrielle, are you here to make comments or? I think she's here to be supportive and if needed to answer All questions. Right, but, okay. but Gabrielle, please <laughs> chime in. Yeah, okay. All right. Everyone can see my screen now? Uh huh. Yes. Perfect. All right. Uh, so this is the existing building, um, it's going to the old Judy's location. The proposed new exterior um, would keep the same looking facade. Um, we're going to change the proposal to change the color of the building to a dark blue. Uh, and then the fixtures you'll see around the building uh, to a maize color. Uh, and then for signage on the frontage of the building, there'll be three signs at the front, uh, as well as a sign on the door, which will show in another image here. Um, so we'll dive into those three signs at the, at the top of that uh, hexagon in the front of the building. Um, they're all going to be about six feet tall. Uh, the one facing uh, northwest is going to be six feet long. The center one uh, with the primary logo will be six foot by six foot as well. Uh, and then the northwest facing sign is four feet. It's a little bit, a little bit shorter. Um, the total for this is... Uh, 102 square feet. And then for the front door, we're going to have um, just this vinyl Amherst primary Amherst Oyster Bar logo that's two and a half feet by two and a half feet, uh, centered on a glass uh, insert in the door, uh, totaling six square feet of signage. Uh, and just so you can see where the location is, once again, I've numbered them here. So you can see the six by six sign uh, facing northwest the six by six right here, and then the four by six sign right here. The front door will <clears throat> remain in the same location as Judy's front door um, with that two and a half foot by two and a half foot logo on the front. Uh, and so the frontage of this building is a little under 70 feet long uh, and the hexagon is 20, 20 feet tall, the top of the building uh, to this roof line. Uh, there is also a back entrance to the building. Um, for this back entrance, we are proposing uh, no additional um, signage. We're trying to use the same locations uh, that Judy's banners used to be. Uh, so putting the primary logo on the banner at the end to kind of identify uh, the access way. Uh, and then the elevator shaft that helps for ADA access in the back uh, will have the vinyl uh, with the primary logo centered in the same location that Judy's had centered prior. Uh, the light fixtures we're going to update to the maize color uh, and then the building will have the blue paint as well. And so for that banner in the back access, it's three feet tall. Uh, I can't see the numbers here by two, two feet. Two by three. One. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, but two feet, so six square, square feet total for that banner. The vinyl on the elevator shaft is three and a half feet by four feet tall, totaling 14 square feet. Uh, and those are those locations one more time. That's just a fun graphic that we have uh, that we nixed. We originally had, but we aren't going to use any longer for vinyl. We took the vinyl out of the front windows. Uh, this is the paint color, Benjamin Moore North Sea or Old Navy. We're deciding between the two uh, final colors um, and not included in this presentation, but I want to pull it up separate. We do have a Pantone uh, picked out for the maize color um, that we are finalizing now. So uh, at this point, I'd like to open it up to um, the design review board for any <clears throat> questions you might have, comments you have, concerns. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so what you're saying is the the lights are going to be that yellow, I, or uh, okay. am I misinterpreting? Yes, those light fixtures are going to be that maze. That's color. maze, okay, yeah. okay, okay. All right. 
Uh, would anybody like to start? Any thoughts or comments? Um, um, if you'd like me to flip to another slide, just let me know where you want to go and I can okay. navigate that. All right, yeah. <clears throat> well, I'll, I'll just offer my first sort of impression was it's a lot. <laughs> uh, a lot of, I'm not saying I don't like it. I'm just saying that, wow, um, so, so many lights. I'm not sh sure, particularly when they're, when they're this yellow. So with those lights, we are just proposing to keep the original Judy's lights. You'll see that they are green here. Um, we're just okay. updating the color to the color palette. Okay, okay. That's and what we did on this hexagon right here is these lights were facing upwards. Yeah. And that was fine when Judy's used to have these awnings coming out, but we wanted to stick with the uh, dark sky kind of okay. initiative. That I know the town is focused on. So we yeah, flipped okay. them up to kind of push them down. Um, so they're not uh, putting this light up to the sky. Okay, okay, all right. And you say you're going to have the, the windows are going to have a, a, a translucent covering. Is that still in place? Is that we what have, you're showing us there? We have okay. we have no vinyl. We did we did bring this uh, to Marine at one point just for tentative uh, understanding of what you guys might be looking for because we didn't want to uh, present something that would be far off from uh, what you would be expecting. So we got some feedback already, and we took away the vinyl because we knew that would count towards signage, and we didn't want to exceed the ten percent. Um, so that has been removed. Okay. Okay. So the windows will be clear then. Is that what you're saying? That is that, correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Because you could frost them, I guess. Okay. All right. I think Tom okay. has raised his hand. What's that? Tom has raised his hand. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tom. Thanks. Um, Dylan, you know, I just want to say that um, I've done work in this space before, not this specific space this market space and i really appreciate the direction you're going the kind of um let's call it marine quality and slash pinstripe blue and white that i think is happening here with the maze i think it's a great um a great color palette i i do feel like um it is a lot of blue and I don't, I don't actually think it would hurt your design to provide more white. And when I look at the existing facade, I very much recognize that there are architectural features here that are white that um, could remain white while these other elements could remain or could become dark. And I think you might actually get a, a more sophisticated look which i think is something you're actually going for in the sense that like and it's not a lot i think it's a few places that would lighten this up um on this facade and make it feel less like this new big blue block that was dropped in there but i think it was you know your imagery is large it's clear it's adorable it the colors i think are right i just i just feel like it I feel like you could actually get a better, more sophisticated result with a little less. Like the, for instance, the crown uh, molding across the top of the building yep. is has great detail that's going to be lost in the dark blue that could really be a great, beautiful, elegant cap to this navy blue that you guys are doing. And I keep coming back to like the navy blue pinstripe suit with the gold, you know, buttons like if that's the balance you're looking for, I think we need more pinstripes. And that's kind of the, the sense that I'm getting. I think it would be super sophisticated if, if we saw a little bit more of that. Just my two cents though, again. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate that, thank you. Erica. Erica. Raise your hand. Thank you for the presentation, Dylan. Really, I, it's a very professional package of signage, which I'm appreciating. Um, I want to second what Tom is saying about the um, the amount of blue, and um, you know, it's a, it's it's a nice part of downtown, an eclectic mix of of architecture. Um, but the degree to which this building has some historic character, I think, it'd be nice to maintain that moving forward. Um, and it's it's. Uh, I realize that this is a you know a super simple rendering, but I I do think that the dark color um, in reality will make this harder to see. Make that kind of the the dentals um, at the at the wood um, 
roof line um, difficult to see. And so I too would vote for those to be um, painted in um, white to match other other architectural kind of the signposts and details. And actually, since you flipped to this sign yeah. or to this image, um, yeah, so you were just hovering your mouse over. That was the molding you're referencing. Yeah, and Tom was so this that. kind of roof line, if that could um, be maintained um, as white, that would be really nice. And then um, you your, your rendering shows a, a quite different awning style. Um, and I think that this uh, Judy's little pediment is going away. Could you just um, you want me to articulate, back? articulate the changes here to the actual architecture of the building? So yeah, from my understanding, um, so this break predates me a little bit, but uh, this building used to be two separate buildings, single family homes, I guess. One was Judy's at one point and one was um, another bar, which I'm, I'm um, I, know, I was told it was a, a pretty popular bar. Uh, I forgot its name though. Uh, but it then it merged into one. And so I guess this old uh, awning type thing, this triangle was the old entrance into Judy's. So it's kind of a, uh, it just, it doesn't, doesn't work with the new entrance with the ramp going up. Mm -hmm. And so with the opportunity to change the awnings, we were going to kind of streamline that. So you can see here to kind of make it one single line across the roof. Yep. Fine. Um, and then I do appreciate the, the, the comment on the, the molding and the detail. I do think uh, I tried to do the best with what we had, and this is kind of more of a paint blocks, but I do, um, I do agree. I think that detail is important. I think that's the intent is to keep that. It'll just be painted. Um, I do like the idea of it being white. It's something that I'd, I'd bring back to the design team um, to reference, but um, I do think a little, I lost a little bit with uh, kind of that overlay I had gone with there. Yeah, I think that'll be that, that would be a, a nice um, kind of refinement of, of this. And I um, is there any? I, don't, I haven't tallied up the, the the square footages that you presented, but is there any ability to put some uh, signage um, branding on the awning itself? Is there anything left? Um, so what I have total right now with uh, 70 feet long, 20 foot tall, uh, and then the 102 square feet of signage in the front, it totaled up to seven, a uh, little over 7% uh, signage for the front. So about 3% below the 10% threshold. Um, uh, we were just trying to, we kept it a little tight. We wanted to focus. We thought the uh, branding in the front here up top was our most valuable. Uh -huh. um, and so that's kind of where we brought it to and just wanted to make sure we were under the 10%, but uh, branding along the awning, uh, I don't think if it was the right sizing could keep us within <clears throat> or underneath that 10%. Yeah, just looking at like kind of pulling somebody in from that, that end of the sidewalk or something like that could be an opportunity if you have all of that. And it's a big field of blue, so something would really pop if you were to put it there, but mm -hmm. I will let somebody else take their opinion. Uh, Can Davis? Yeah. Where's Catherine? Hi, Heather? yes. Yeah. Um, I lost Dylan. I wanted to see his face. I'm going to move Hi back there. so I can see it. Um, thank you so much for your presentation. I just want to say, personally, I'm really excited for the Amherst Oyster Bar to come to town. Um, and you know, just to save us all some time, I, I just wanted to say that I agree both with Erica and Tom particularly as a representing, representing the historical commission that I, it would be a shame to me if we lost some of these historical details um, in the process of this new design. And if there's a way to incorporate, you know, um, some of those into this new design as well as maybe pull back a little bit on the blue, uh, that, that would be great. Yeah, I definitely, uh, I appreciate that. It was something that we didn't even think about originally in the design, but now that you're saying it, I think it's something that we'd definitely like to keep, especially if that got us through to, to permitting. So if this was to be white uh, and kept that detail, could actually accentuate it a little bit with the dark blue just underneath it, which could look really nice uh, and kind of give a good uh, call out to the, to the old, old as well as the, uh, the new building going in there. 
have a it. clarifying question. So yeah. on this rendering, uh, oh, I guess I can't really use my mouse necessarily, but so the, was it the hexagon? Um, yeah. We talked about the white trim at the top, molding to yeah. keep that. How about on the uh, other portion of the roof line, if you will, with uh, uh, at the top of the building, would uh, board members want that also to mm -hmm. um, have a, a white border at the top or just the hexagon? I'll flip back. See someone you. drawing. <laughs> That's me. Um, okay, you. so you are. Okay, cool, cool. Back so you can see that. You can see the detail does run around. I think. Yep. Uh, I don't know if it follows yeah. the roof line, but. Yeah. Uh, and maybe just say all the fascia. Let's see. Sorry, I just to be clear. I didn't catch that. Yeah. Sorry. Actually. Hi. If, if um, I, was I was just gonna say it, maybe just all the fascia, just to be clear, which is that yeah. edge of the roof yeah. that runs yeah. around the whole building, even where there's not that detail, the dental detail. Okay. In that in that gable end, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering if maybe that entire that entire gabled area couldn't the whole, whole top of the of the, <clears throat> of the building be white. Uh, I think. If we have blue and then we have outlines in white, then we've got gold lamps and a lot of blue uh, in the front. Uh, I don't know, that might be too many options, too many looks, because I was going to chime in. I'm glad that Tom brought that up because I think it's a lot of blue and I think the personality of the building is lost. Uh, and I always thought maybe it's just me, but this one, the newer edition, which, which is the um, vertical uh, windows that was Judy added a number of years ago was sort of the personality of the building. And it's really pretty much lost when the whole, uh, that whole area is so solid blue. So uh, I would vote for eliminating as much blue as possible and keeping it simple. Um, I think, I think we'd want to keep the, uh, the anything that's the siding of the, the building to be blue, but I don't think there's any problem with the molding uh, being okay. white and retaining okay. that white. Yeah. Uh, Why couldn't Catherine you paint Davis, the rest? Is that a like C hand or is that a new hand? Oh, Catherine, is it? Okay. I, just before we moved on to too far beyond this, I, I wanted to bring back up the lights. Um, I know that you had said, Dylan, that, and I'm trying to look at both picturings, both current and the new design at the same time, um, move to the top beneath this, this you know, beautiful molding. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering where you are hoping to position those lights and how that might interrupt that design feature. Um, and then the second part of this is that I find the maze to be really, you know, lovely juxtaposed to the blue. However, I on that portion where you have the logos, it, it feels a little heavy to me and a little busy. And uh, I, I just wanted to, you know, put that out to the rest of the design review board and, you know, see what other people think, or is this just something that's popping out to me? Um, and, you know, when we change this potentially in the new design to having a white molding on the top, will that be more busy or will that solve some of that? Mm -hmm problem. Um, and it, there's a lot of lights up there. Somehow when it's lower and pointing up, it doesn't really strike me in the same way. But from the top, um, yeah, it's, it's, it seems a little cluttered. I think if they were uh, a more neutral color, like black, uh, gray, I don't think we would be talking about that. But again, that's my impression. There's a lot of little gold lights uh, and I think you want to, I know you're, you're aiming for a really classy kind of exterior and I'm not sure it's coming off that way. It's just um, a little busy, a little blue. Tom Long has raised his hand in, in Lindsay. Yeah, I, I mean, just my two cents on the lights is I do feel like they're busy in this, in the context that they're, I, I, 
I don't think this rendering is doing you a lot of help right now. Let's put it that way. So, so I feel like, um, you know, there are just some decisions that are going to be hard to judge. Like when I look at the building now and I'm looking at the lights, I definitely notice those lights because they're dark and they're against a white surface. So <clears throat> I can't say they're going to be any more obtrusive or obvious in this context. Um, but I, but I do get, you know, how close are they to that molding piece and how far do they drop down? And I think those are things you want to consider um, because when it's just blue washed like that, you don't see that detail and it's hard to tell exactly where those lights are again, which is why I feel like the rendering is not helping, helping you help us help you. So, um, so I, I, I think, <clears throat> I think I'm okay with it if your architect decide, like figures out how to get them below that line so they're not encroaching too far. But um, but it's going to be I think it's going to be it'll be a tricky solution. Uh, Lindsay, Mark. Yeah, I guess. Um, hi. I don't. Uh, I also just. I think overall, I think it's really bold and and cool. So I. I hear what everybody's saying and I think it is a lot of blue, but I also, I think it, it's fun and jazzy. And so um, aside from a few of the comments about, you know, the, the fascia, um, you know, I agree with the fascia. I also agree that maybe, maybe rather than just the like yellow lights, I think maybe you could get a little more architectural about it. Um, I think that the lamp posts could be yellow and that might really kind of like ground it. Um, and rather than just kind of having the fixtures of lights, like I really like how you have the gold railing and it looks like maybe you have a gold front door. I can't quite tell what that little band is at the top of the ramp, but, um, you know, maybe if you could find some ways to articulate that gold that's more integral to the kind of the rhythm of, of what's there, that's not just the fixture. So I might suggest at least the lampposts. Um, and then if you, if you do create that kind of like top edge of the white um, fascia along the roof. And then perhaps there's some other places where you could have a little relief of white. I think just a few of those kind of details might help balance it a lot. Um, and then the only other thing I would say is that I, I think it might, might help your signage to have something along the, um, along the ramp. Uh, can I draw, I think? Um, but essentially, I won't see how, but, but along that kind of like, um, I guess it's the awning, is it an awning or a roof edge that runs along the ramp? That's an awning. Yeah. So I wonder, I know that there's the lamp post that kind of break it up, but, um, and I do think you have quite a bit of visibility, but it just might, it might be worth considering. I'm sure you have considered it. It just seems like a long stretch that doesn't have any signage. So it might be a place where you you could have your AOB again or just something that kind of keys you back. That being said, I think that the color like all ties it together. So, you know, I don't think you necessarily need it, but um, it could be something to consider is just having another kind of AOB um, along that edge. Um, and then could you switch to the back? Yep. That's the front door. That's the signage that you would see when walking. Yeah, I think that looks really nice. Uh, so this is the existing back currently. The, the Judy's banners down the side, those green lights, and this is the proposed. Yeah. So again, here I think you know it could be something. I don't know if other people would agree or not, but like where again you bring that yellow down the lamp post, um, and you know perhaps the lamps themselves don't even have to be gold. It just you know it's just a thought of like. We were in the design process, we kind of were, were deciding on how to address that in those light posts here. And then also in the front of the building are a white uh, PVC uh, that we don't want to get into. Oh, I see. It's kind of not a yeah. paintable material. That's why we kind of went after those, the, the lamps uh, instead. Yeah. Add that. What, is that a copper? What is the lamp itself? Um, it's just a, I believe it's, it's some sort of metal. I don't, it don't think it's mm -hmm. copper. I think it's something cheaper. That's that. kind of risky too, in terms of weathering. Are you um, actually going to paint I, those? 
Are those lamp posts going to, I mean, the lamp's going to be painted? Well, I mean, let's see. Got some notes on some of the existing material. I didn't catch that. Uh, uh, sorry, I was flipping over something. Um, oh. the, the, the lights are, they're painted. It is a metal that got painted. Okay, um, based that's on trick. I would agree with Lindsay. It's, weathering could be a problem with that sort of thing. Then you're going to end up with a lot of, you know, sort of half painted. We'll end up taking them down and, and painting them in a shop and then we'll, we'll bring well, them. Well, sure, down. but after a year or so, you know, yeah, that's up to you. Okay. Uh, Erica? Hey, so um, it's, it occurs to me the longer I, I look at it, um, one of the things that I'm struggling with a little bit on the, on the front and particularly with the um, half hexagon tower piece, is that um, the existing building is kind of marked by, or that portion, right? The, the hexagon is marked by this kind of flatness, right? You've got the windows and then these MDF panels and then the surface trim. And when we kind of move up to how you're, you're gonna be covering up those clerestory windows with new signage, are you intending, and again, this goes back to Tom's comment about the rendering being kind of oversimple. Are you intending to carry that trim line up so that it'll be, um, marking the corners, are you? How are you meeting the corners with your new flat, super flat um, panels? What are we going to see there? Um, yeah, and and I, it's, I'm glad that you brought up the windows as well um, up the top here. Um, I meant to mention those earlier. That is has been a problem with Judy's that they battled with for 40 years. I don't know if you remember in the space they had a giant orange umbrella, um, and they had shades coming down. They always yeah. fought that western sun. Uh, to the point when we decided to do the design for this and it was we, we really need to do something with those windows it's nice to have the light but it got so hot in there that it, with all the heat they ended up going back and, and kind of shading it all out sure. over time um but yeah the upper upper panels um intend there's probably some some detail to bring into those corners uh in the hexagon because um, the, the down below they're just they're painted blue but if you continued that line up so that it was still blue but there was a little bit of detail and that's one of the things that we don't see here is like all the surface texture and how shade and shadow are going to make it feel less monolithic than it does in this mm -hmm. image um so i'm fine with the amount of blue as long as that fascia um is is white throughout um because I think there's going to be more to it than we see, but I, I would encourage your designer to ensure that that uh, trim carries all the way up the corners and, and somehow is you know a, a consistent design detail that while painted blue still frames your new signage, it, it, at least in some way, like if not fully outlining them, right? That there's there's something there that is a, a carry through. <clears throat> I can see Tom wanted to jump in, probably to disagree with me. No, no, I, I actually, I agree with you. And I actually think um, this is why I'm saying I don't think this is helping the situation is that there's almost no way in how you're presenting the material later on that all of this stuff is going to look as monolithic as it does right now. Because the wall paint is never going to match the vinyl. That's never going to match the Pantone color from your signage. And that's going to be on some other material or whatnot. So we're going to see more individual items and elements and details than you're, show, than you're giving yourself credit for here. So I think there's going to be a lot more nuance. And I think as um, you know, Eric is saying, that those edges, if they stay clean wood, and those signs are inset and offset or however they're organized on there, um, like framed paintings or whatnot, will we'll make a huge difference because it'll be adding more detail rather than flattening it, which is what it feels like. And I don't think it's going to be as monolithic as we're seeing. So I, I'm agreeing. And I think that some other rendering or gesture would tell a different story. So that's just my thoughts on it. <clears throat> So are you suggesting that we ask them to come back with a, a modification of what we have here? Is that I don't impression think so out? in the sense that like I think as long as we stick with as long as the the 
the top detail that we talked about, mm -hmm. the molding of the top is, is kept white. Mm -hmm. I think, I, I don't think we're gonna have the problem we see in the image. And I think we're reacting to the kind of monolithic quality that we're seeing, yeah, true. but I don't think that's actually what it's gonna look right. like. So I'm actually not concerned with seeing it again because I don't think it'll ever look quite like it is here. Right. And I don't think it'll be much more nuanced and have a little bit more variation in it than that. I have a couple of clarifying questions. Um, so is there a building wall on the side um, and uh, in the blue wall on the rear, um, would the board want white molding at the rear? And if, if there is some sort of a side building um, facade, would you, um, I guess we would need you to clarify if, if that exists. These are all zero lot lines, so we're built right up to the neighboring lots. Got it. Yeah. And then the rear, I, I did notice in your rendering, it does show us like a tiny ounce of a blue wall. Yeah, there's, you can see in this a little bit better. Um, this is actually right here. Just this wall is the end of Judy. So that would get the, oh. the same blue paint. Yeah. And so does the board, uh, it doesn't, yeah, does the board want a white trim at the top or um, or no? You could go to the next slide that shows the rendering. There is no molding at that back entrance either, just as a, to clarify. I guess it's okay. I want to go back to the uh, window, uh, the front window. I think you m mentioned that um, where, yeah, the, where it says AOB, you're not going to have that you are or are not going to have the panel with the oysters in the back. I can you clarify that where it says up on the awning A O B, and there's a design in that um, in that panel. This, is that going to be there or the, or the not? panel? Yes, and that's this is you can see the detail here a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Okay. This is pulling it out. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. The front. Then I had one other. Oh, sorry, continue, sorry. Sorry, I was just the front uh, of that hexagon is just going to be the blue, the two, uh, mm -hmm. either side will have that pattern yeah. in the back. I wonder why you have to say downtown Amherst. Uh, to, <laughs> it's pretty obvious that's where you are. Is, is that just to balance off the print? Um, we just thought know. that was a, a <laughs> big pride in being in downtown Amherst and wanted to call that out. That'll be on marketing that goes on our website. And okay. Okay, I think. All right. Yeah. yeah. Then I had one other clarifying question about the light fixtures, the light posts in the in the front along North Pleasant Street. Uh, Dylan, yeah. did you say that the the that material you would not be able to paint over that or it's white over? PVC. Um, so it's it we wouldn't paint it. It's got it. Yep. Like a plastic almost. And then uh, I believe uh, Gabrielle Gould would like to make a comment. Hi guys. Um, I just wanted to say, I think we have eight or nine new businesses opening on this street alone in the next uh, two to seven months. And um, the reinvention of our downtown uh, post pandemic is really important to the economic growth and development of this area. and. Adding that downtown Amherst in there and that point of pride in marketing and showing who we are and that we are a community that is revitalizing and becoming more vibrant than we ever were before is really exciting for me from my position. Um, I, I agree that this, I, I see where everybody's coming from, but I also, we all know that these computer renderings never show the nuances and the shading and the coloring. And um, I think this is going to be quite an incredible statement. And as someone who is looking at Judy's every day and walking by, um, we are looking at something that has fallen into great disrepair, wasn't um, looking great pre-pandemic, is looking really rough now, and it's really exciting to see this coming to fruition and um, taking into account that that handicapped ramp was put in years ago but never really addressed fully in terms of entrance and that sort of weird triangle thing. And um, welcome to the block. And also to keep in mind that the existing lamp posts that are there are soon going to be replaced with the same style that is down by Kendrick Park. And I think that that's gonna really add some beauty to this whole building as well. 
Um, so I just wanted to put a shout out to that. Just it's so exciting to see these things really starting to happen and to see the change and to see the pride in our downtown. Are you talking about these posts right here and in, in here in the foreground? I am. I am. Those are all slated to be here. changed out soon. Yeah. Great. It's exciting. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, anything that anybody wants to add <clears throat> as we pass on this uh, approval or recommendation? So everybody's happy with what we have suggested. And Maureen, do you want to go over the specific uh, sort of changes? Yeah, sure. So make the, <coughs> the uh, I guess, the roof line molding white for the front building okay. facade. Um, and make sure that the edges are clean um, uh, for the trim of the, particularly the, the, hex, the half a hexagon um, building part. Um, that was it. Um, so, well, so I the back, the light fixtures uh, or the light posts in the rear, um, you know, the, fr the front light posts can't be painted so, um, so did the board want to be consistent with with that, with keeping the the light fixtures white in the rear then? I would, but others may feel differently. Anybody want, uh, so are we, is everybody happy with the white post and the uh, gold? Uh, or do you want, or- I mean, I think with the PVC factor, it makes sense to keep them as they are. As, oh, I don't know if there's a PVC in the- I believe Unless, these ones in the back are as well. Oh, so. those are- Okay, well then forget it. Okay. <laughs> They'll leave them white. All right. They're easier for maintenance for operations and- Oh, content. definitely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anything else, Maureen? Anything, any, any of the board- And just, uh, I guess one more clarifying question. So like the light, I'm um, sorry, the um, banners, so the, the, the banner closest to our view has that logo. Um, we don't necessarily see that repeated in the other banners, but is that, will the logo be in the other? Uh, we were, some, we're, we're open to, to anything there. We just had the, the leading one. I see. Okay, so you- I have a guess. suggestion that I, I might just use your pattern um, there, the backwash pattern. I think it'd be really elegant and simple and probably the same to produce, you know, just a solid color. So yeah, this, that this was texture right there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that, I think you have it behind some of the, um, signage out front too, or some pattern out there. So, you know, that could just be a texture that you could use there to reinforce that without the logo, 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 logo all yeah. the way down. That's a good idea. Or don't even put them on, just have the, we could just have that right at, to the entrance to the back. Uh, hmm. uh, okay, and, and so, oh, uh, okay, yep, uh, Lindsay. What, um, what's the intention with the color colors shown at the back door? Uh, are you referencing this? This is the elevator um, shaft. This was just a, probably getting too cute, was trying to, the colors are not going to change from the existing uh, shaft. We're just going to replace this with the Amber Oyster Bar primary logo. Okay, so it just stays gray. Yeah, it just stays the same gray. Tom. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, all right. So we talked about the the white molding the making sure the trim is is clean, the edges are clean and um, add tech, you know, if possible, um, add texture to the rear banners. Um, and I think that was it. Okay, all right. <clears throat> okay, so do I hear a motion that we um, approve the application with those additional uh, comments or recommendations and it looks like tom has one more comment or oh, question tom? okay oh, so nope. so move oh, luxury oh so okay. move okay is there a second second Catherine, are you seconding 
Okay, yeah. Catherine. Okay, it's moved and seconded. Let me take a roll call. Um, see how you all stand on this. Uh, Lindsay, yes or um, no? Yes. Okay, Kat, uh, Catherine, yes, yes or no? Okay, Erica? Yes. Okay, Tom? Yes. Okay, Catherine, yes, okay. All right, very nice. So do you have an idea when this will be opening and the, every... Um, so yeah, this was our last step for Article 14 approval uh, with the town. So we can okay. start with uh, some demolition and construction as soon as possible. Um, the lead times on items are all, I mean, I'm sure you all have heard about it all, but uh, wherever we've been juggling it, we're looking for uh, July, mid-July, uh, if we can, as long as nothing else comes, comes around. So hopefully this summer we'll be up and running and excited to have you all down there, so. Okay. Thank Very you for good. your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, good luck. Okay. Thank you, bye now. Okay. Next, now, Maureen. We have uh, James Richards, um, who is here to um, show you his proposed signage for his new retail shop, uh, Amethyst, uh, which is located at 40 Main Street. Uh -huh. And uh, James, if you could share your screen, or I, I could, if if that's helpful. I, I believe you said that you might be you might have called in. So uh, let me pull up your application. Uh, bear with me for one moment. So James, once I uh, pull this up, if you could explain, uh, if you could introduce yourself and explain what you're proposing. Um, okay, can you can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Uh, can you see me? No. No. Um, so I just uh, I just asked you to start your video. Um, but oh, there you go. So um, I don't believe that I have a video, but you do perhaps? We see you now, we see you now. Okay. Oh, great, great. Uh, hi, my name is James Richards, and this is my shop uh, proposal for a sign. Um, simple, I think this can not be as complicated as the oyster bar. Uh, amethyst uh, in the purple lettering, and that's like a Broadway script kind of an art deco style is what I'd like to have. And that's the front window, which I've already installed a sticker type of sign in the same uh, color and the same uh, lettering style uh, saying amethyst. And those are just the two pieces that I am looking to get approved. All right. Um, okay, your door, is this your door? Uh, that is right. the door. Okay, um, are you putting anything on the door? It's just a sign that says open. Okay, all right. Okay. And uh, I'll just finish showing everyone the photos. Sure, um, okay. So um, your retail shop abuts the, um, the underpass? And so yep. there's three windows through that un underpass. So, so it was window one, uh -huh. window two, and window three. And then the final photo shows you looking back towards town hall. Okay. And that shows all three windows. Okay. And I think it, uh, Lindsay, Lindsay uh, has raised your hand. Hey. Um, so I think. My only suggestion might be to invert the white and purple on your sign because um, of the like outline. Um, just think it would stand out a lot more and be a lot kind of cleaner if you had, you know, just a purple field or like the whole sign is purple with just white lettering, the same font and everything. Have you considered sure. that? 
Um, I would be glad to do that. If if that if other people agree that that's a good idea, I'd be glad to. What do other people think? <clears throat> Repeat that. Is that are you talking about the sign, Lindsay, or the one on the window? The sign that's shown okay. here. Okay. Um, just just invert it. So rather than having the 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 purple uh, border with the purple lettering on a white uh -huh. background, have basically a purple background with just white lettering. Oh, okay. No border. Yeah, it hadn't occurred to me, but I I like it a lot, especially looking at the other awnings, which are solid. Uh -huh. The other, you know, your neighbors on the street, solid yeah. the white lettering. I think that would right. really nice. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, she has white sign with black lettering. Uh, Tom? I was just curious um, what your plan is for the material for that. I'm whether it's um, like what kind of quality or material you might expect that to be. The sign? Yeah, the hanging sign. Uh -huh. Well, yes, uh, Amherst copy is is making that it's a standard uh metal okay like composite sign that they yeah. do it's okay also the same as uh my neighbors there cool okay thank you okay any other thoughts or suggestions so we're really focusing on the sign on the outside of the building um uh, everything the sign on the window is is okay. I mean, I generally speaking, I, I'm fine with it either way. Um, okay. Being white on black or or white on, sorry, purple on white or white on purple. I think I think either one's going to stand out uh, in this perpendicular format. So I'm okay mm -hmm. with it. Okay, Catherine. Hi, James. Are are you planning to put any signage in terms of I mean a vinyl stick on letter in the three different windows that go down um, the tunnel to the parking garage? Or are you going to leave those yeah, windows I, as is? Yeah, I wasn't planning on adding lettering to that necessarily at okay. this time. I wasn't anyway. sure. So I those those photos yeah. were just included. Yeah, they they uh, I decided to cross the street and take some photos of the of the of the different um, of the existing conditions. I mean, if the board w wants to make recommendations um, for the existing signage, um, that's perfectly fine. Um, you know, technically, uh, Mr. Richards, he, uh, you know, those signs that you do have, the existing signs that you do have in the door and in, in the various windows. Um, do need a, a building permit uh, approval, and uh, um, you know the um, I, I believe the building inspectors will, will you know talk to you about that. So you know the board um, has jurisdiction to provide recommendations to uh, the 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 decal uh, or the the lettering and the signage that is shown in the photographs. So I suppose. Um, oh. I, I does, are you saying that I that I need further uh, approval for things that are on the window as as they are right now? It will be part of your building uh, permit uh, approval process, and so, um, and so because of that, that triggers a DRB, um, you know, review. So if the board wants to provide any additional recommendations other than uh, the uh, other than the proposed blade sign that's perfectly fine and you know the building inspectors can incorporate um, those recommendations as well okay okay so do i hear any further comments from the board about um, um, further signage or the signage that we that we're, that's being proposed. So I'm not sure about uh, the original proposal to uh, have the purple background and the white lettering. Um, is that, um, 
a recommendation, but we're not, we can we can suggest this, but um, I get the I don't get the sense that if they, he doesn't follow through, that we wouldn't approve it. Is that the way I'm seeing this, uh, Lindsay? I just want to say uh, one other one other pitch for that idea is just that I think it might you know it might weather better. Like um, I think the dark background will hide some of the kind of um, dirt that will accumulate over time. So, in my opinion, I would make it a recommendation, but it's okay. totally. You know, it's a, it's a question for the board to whether or not that's something that is agreed upon. Okay, thank you. Catherine? I, I actually want to agree with Lindsay on that. I think that in terms of, you know, not just weathering, but in the continuity of the other signs on the street, um, having sort of a solid color background and then white lettering, um, I think that uh, it might just look nice. <laughs> okay. And um, sort of, just continuity sake. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Gabrielle. Uh, Maureen, I'm sorry. I just wanted to follow up with you. Um, I understand he needs the building permit for this sign um, to hang the amethyst sign, but you said windows. Does he have anything in the other three windows? I thought it was just the front window, the temporary open sign. Um, well, yeah, so I can go through. So the uh, if you see um, the amethyst, lettering yeah. in the front window so that is signage um that mm -hmm. you know um under the zoning bylaw it it, it triggers um it triggers a review just like the oyster bar that we just reviewed um this is signage the the red the the red star and and these yellow yellow signs here this is this is signage um considered signage under the zoning bylaw and um this open sign here on the door is considered signage um so it it just um you know technically mr richards should have um included you know he should have uh, consulted um inspection services about the pr proposed signage um for the business as a whole um but the, you know it's fine that it is up but you know uh the the building inspectors may have some questions but i'm i'm sure they're they're fine with it um but you know here the the design review board does have you know does this is your opportunity um to um help guide the building inspectors um in their decision making for approving the um building permit for the signage and so this I, I, is, a, this is uh, and so this is in a way uh, education for you, uh, Gabrielle. Um, exactly. As as you are working with businesses, is that you know these sorts of things you know they need to go through. You know, unfortunately, bureaucracy will dictate that uh, that you know uh, town hall needs to abide by the zoning bylaw, and so um, you know needed permits or needed permits and so these are right. you know the technicalities of of the zoning bylaw so my question is like the open signs he, he those are temporary right so he sticks those in the window when he's open and then takes mm -hmm. them out when he's not i'm assuming um exactly you know. right yeah and so, so those that... are conversations with the building inspector of what that all means um okay yeah, and then winter hours. Uh, you know, his neighbor um, over at Art of Intimate, she has had hers um, uh, put on the window in a nice. Um, uh, I know the word; it's just not coming to me. Um, it, 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 are you sort of saying like that's preferable to a yellow sign, or? Yeah, and so for mm -hmm. the across across the Art of Intimate, you know, for example, um, that business owner had. Uh, uh, proposed all the lettering that you see on her windows okay. and doorway um, and went through the building permit process. So great, that would thank be, you. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to know. And then um, the last question I have, and again, this is educational for me to help businesses going forward. Um, during the holidays and certain seasons, people like to decorate their windows with, you know, um, some hand painted glass work or hearts and things like that. I'm assuming that that's all fine to go with as long as it's a temporary measure. Uh, that would be my my opinion. 
And okay. I, uh, and so, uh, so if you're asking me, I think that's fine, <laughs> but um, you might want to just double check with, you know, uh, inspection services. All right. Thank you. And then to Mr. Richards, uh, we don't want to alarm you or scare you. It's, it's fine that you have, you know, the yellow signs and the open sign. It's just, you know, technically you should have gone through um, inspection services before putting that up. Okay. I think Catherine has her hand up. There you go, Catherine. Hi, thank you. I, I want to just apologize to the board and to Jamie um, because I actually have to leave the meeting. Okay. But before before I go, I the reason I asked about the windows in the alleyway, um, and then my second part was going to say if we do recommend changing the sign to a solid purple with white lettering, would we then also make the recommendation that the amethyst on the front window also goes to white lettering? Um, and then I was wondering if the purple and blue banner behind it is a permanent fixture. It, it, I feel like it, it makes the sign a little difficult to read. And obviously your goal and the, our goal in general is to make sure that your sign is visible and that people know that it's a shop and to come in. So I am going to leave that there <laughs> to the rest of the board. Um, and thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, all right. You know, I was thinking uh, about those side windows, which are very interesting. Uh, if in the future you just, if you, uh, uh, as the business grows, you may think, gee, I might like to put some little something, a uh, name of the store or something in the windows. You could always come back to the design review board with your um, suggestion because uh, it's sort of an interesting that you have those other windows and people walking through uh, maybe just a little tiny sign or name of the store, but you don't have to do that now. Um, okay. Yeah. Oh, I like, excuse me, but I, yeah, I like what my neighbor has done. That's, you know, it's really pretty. It's really nice. Um, basically, she's just putting her name and putting the hours up, which uh -huh. you know, I see other people just have like small signs, like yeah. sort of what I did. Yeah. But yes, in the future, that, that might be a nice thing to, to uh, add on to that. I, I do agree with Catherine about the sign with that pant. I don't know whether that's an art glass behind it, but um, it doesn't stand out. Um, and I, I don't know whether the board would agree that maybe having that with, uh, with white outline of the letters or something to make that more uh, visible from the uh, street because it looks a little lost in there now. Anybody having yeah, suggestions? Maybe a white background? Maybe, yeah. I mean, yeah. to uh, any, any others? So what do we, ha what have we concluded here? That we're recommending that the sign from the wall have a purple background with white lettering. Is that, that's Lindsay, that's where I think you stand and you recommend that. That's your recommendation. That is right. my recommendation. Okay. And I'm fine with that. That's okay. fine. Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other thoughts to pass along on this? Okay, if not, so Maureen, what do you have down that we're we, so for we, the blade we, sign, the proposed blade sign have yeah. white lettering with a purple background and no right. outline. Okay. And then leave it to his discretion as to what he wants to do with the sign on the uh, front of the uh, store, so it gets more visibility. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good idea. Okay. All right. So, do I hear uh, a motion to approve this um, as uh, as we have as we've adapted it for? Uh, recommend it, recommending the change uh, specifically uh, on the uh, sign from the building. So move. So move. Is there a second? Okay, Eric, a second. Um, I'll go through and take the roll call. Uh, Lindsay? Yes. Okay. Uh, of course, Catherine's not here. Tom? Right. Okay. Erica? Yes. 
uh, and I, so yes, I, yes. So, okay. Well, okay. Uh, we hope we've been helpful for you and uh, you can always Very. contact Maureen and if you have I, other ideas about signage, uh, bring them back and uh, we'd be happy to look them over. Okay. Oh, that great. Is. And I'll be uh, making the windows along the uh, passageway uh, look better than yeah. but the, the way they look really right neat. now. Yeah, I mean, you ha I just really think they're quite neat. Just make something of them, get a little sign in there. Uh, I stopped by, I, uh, I, uh, after I took the photos, I stopped in your shop and I really like it. It was really fun to walk around and I got a rock for, um, uh, for my workstation. So it was, it was a, okay. a nice, nice little visit to break up my day. So great. Great. Thanks. Thank so, you. We'll move on to the next item, which yes. is for uh, Coordination Cafe, which is located at um, at 103 North Pleasant Street, which is the old location of uh, Bart's Ice Cream. And so this application is in regards of their proposed signage and outdoor seating. And let me um, pull up. Um, so I, I believe Joe Quartz. Uh, Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Uh, I believe he will be um, presenting. So, one second. Where did he go? Oh, 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 here he is. Okay. Hi, hey Joe. Um, if you could um, state your name and I don't know if, you, if you're able to share your screen, that would be helpful. If not, I can share mine. Um, but it, yeah, if you could state your name and, and um, explain what you're proposing, that would be helpful. Sure. Hi, um, my name is Joe Kurtz and that's okay. It was not spelled right in the in the minutes, but it's K-U-R-T-Z. I'm a- Oh, um, sorry. No, it's Oops. okay. No, no problem. I, I would have a hard time trying to pronounce that myself when I looked over the minutes. So I'm not sure how to say that one either. But um, I am from I'm here with uh, Coronation Cafe. And as was already mentioned, <clears throat> I'm sure you know the space. And I will share my screen. You said I should do that, right? Yeah, I, I can do that too, if that's if that's helpful. I, um, you got it. You, if you can. Um, coming up. Okay, cool. And can you see that picture? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you would, of course, recognize that as being the what used to be Bart's ice cream for for many years. And we are putting in a cafe there. It's called Coronation Cafe. And this is pretty, uh, let's see, what this picture is showing you is gonna be the, the, outdoor, the outdoor seating. There's a few um, small tables and chairs that we, that we put out there. These, these already exist. We just put them out there and I took a photograph of them um, a, few, a few days ago. And let me see, I'll show you the next one. I think it's very similar, just another angle. Um, yeah, very similar, just another angle. And did you want to, I don't know if you wanted to pause and talk about that, or if you want me to go through and show the, the signage. Well, I just have one question. Uh, wait, am I muted? We no, hear we you? hear you. Okay. Okay. Uh, are you keeping that same fence or, uh, yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. We don't. Yeah, okay. I don't plan to to okay. move the fence. That'll stay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fine. So why don't you go to the signage because that's probably the most critical piece of coming up. This. Yep. Okay. So here we are looking at it from the from North Pleasant Street, of course. Coronation Cafe. The. Um, And here is another picture of the angle on the side, the, the uh, little angle there at the corner. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'll show you this one. 
which is on the, the side. Um, <clears throat> these these signs, all all three of these signs are th three foot high. And the uh, now I'm looking at the one from the street again, okay? That one is that one is as proposed there on the picture. I mean, of course, the, the designer did the best she could. It's 21 foot long. That one's 21 foot long. And the one on the angle, oops, I went the wrong way there in my pictures. Sorry about that. Um, this one is 12 foot long. And this one is 35 foot long. Now, yeah, I, I, that's that's proposed. I'm not set on this. In fact, it seems like I I may I, I almost wish to make it smaller. And when I say smaller, I mean um, not three foot high, but maybe more like two foot high. And so what I did was, and I regret I don't have this image, but Hair East is the business to the to the right of it, which I'm sure you, you know where I'm talking about. Their sign is I would call a banner type sign, and it's I think it's exactly three foot high. And so I yeah, I continued that. Let me see if I can go back to that front. No, you can't see it. It's just cut off right there. But that would be. I can share my screen, uh, my screen and share uh, Google Street View. If there you that's go. Helpful. Okay. Um, gonna... So here, let me. So this is the old Bart's uh, signage. And then here is the hair, hair east. So you're saying, so is this um, from here to here, the blue, is that, that must be three feet uh, high? That is correct. That is correct. And then this, is, is the black, is that an awning or is that? Um, well, um, no, it's not. No, it's, it, it looks like it goes, at least it's flat, let's put it that way. So, and are you yeah. saying that that's also three feet? It is, it is, but if there's a there's a marquee on this building the architectural aspect of it is only 18 inches and so what i'm saying with that is the sign hangs down um 18 more inches for a total of for a total of three foot if if that makes if you understand what i'm saying okay So you're proposing to um, adjust the, okay, 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 I see now with the, that that does look like a uh, an awning, Maureen. Maybe it's the fabric that gives that sort of feel. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I think it's I just a, ver a vertical fabric panel. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, it is, there's metal frames behind it um, all the way around and- Okay. It's, exactly. it's, it's outboard of the building. And then I'll, I'll just give this other view just so everyone sees. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'll, I'm will going to stop my share unless, okay. uh, but folks can ask if sure. you want me to pull that back up. Okay. So, um, comments. I th oh, I suppose there'd be two ways, of, two comments, maybe about the, the longer sign, but also the um, sign that says Coronation Cafe and uh, how that uh, balances with the rest of the uh, signage. So, any comments? People okay with this? Anybody have any thoughts? Lindsay has raised her hand. Oh, okay, Lindsay. Hey. Um, well, I'm excited to see that there's a new cafe coming to town. So, Thank you and congrats. Um, 
I like this elevation that we're looking at here. I think that everything is working. There's still, it's a bit busy, um, you know, with the script and the multiple signs, but I'm relatively fine with this elevation. Can you go to the last street view, Maureen? Oh, sure. Um, um, the, the, uh, this right here? Or? No, the, sorry, the presentation. Oh. Oh, oh, sorry. Then that means, um, sorry, Joe, if you could pull that. Sure. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Coming up. That one. That's the street view. Yeah. Keep going to the side alley view. Oh, you want the side. Yeah. Okay. One second. Yeah. There. Yeah. That one feels kind of excessive in terms of the amount of information that you're providing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if there was a way to simmer that into something that is, again, I think having the, the same font for one thing, like you've got the script on the other side that says something about healthy, you know, healthy, healthy cuisine. Um, so yeah, I don't know if, if it's just, you know, I don't think you need to like list all of your menu or even the highlights of the menu. I think that's just kind of a lot of information that's relatively unnecessary um, and kind of cluttery feeling. Um, also, it's like, you know, the more, the more the imagination can do the trick and get people in there. Uh, maybe from a business standpoint, that's a good idea. But yeah, so I would just say like, if you could, if you could limit that information and use the same font on both sides, um, that would be my recommendation. Should I respond now? Is that okay? Yeah, we we have actually remade. I agree with you, and we had the same thought, and we've remade it with a with only about two or three things on each on each side. We have, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. I agree with you. We're we're planning to say. Um, fewer things there. So you said you're eliminating. So right now it looks like you have one, two, three, four on this on the left, and then one, two, three, four, five on on the right side. And yeah. you're saying that you, you would like to limit it to maybe three on both sides. Yeah, <clears throat> I actually have another design. I'm not sure I could find that real real seamlessly and show you, but I think it says handmade soft pretzels on the one side and on the other side it says loose leaf tea and mocha some and latte and latte those, those three things yeah i think i mean that i think that little... that's in the direction of reduction of information but i also think yeah it's kind of still very specific like where the the other elevation the street side is kind of more general like you're talking about a certain type of cuisine and a certain kind of friendliness of welcoming mm -hmm. so i guess i just don't think you need that degree of specificity and it's a little bit distracting and yeah. so i would just i would just be i would i would suggest going more general and again um holding the same kind of style of text both from a font standpoint and information as on the other side may i may i say one more thing um i don't want to ask too many questions but what what would you say as a board if if i would actually eliminate this entire sign that that would be a question that I'd like to raise because, like I said at the beginning, I I, I kind of built it based upon what I saw right. Bart's had done, and now when I look at it, I say, "Wow, this is this is so much signage." Um, but I think in terms of even the the percentages that's allowed, I I believe it's okay. Yeah. But um, I just wanted to present that question to you all as well to finish since i've been speaking so much i'm and then i'll be done <laughs> i would just say i think that the banner should remain i think that wrapping it is important as a unifying element 
but I don't think you need all that text on the other side of the Coronation Cafe. That's yeah. all I'll say. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with Lindsay uh, entirely. I'll leave the sign with the, your, your Coronation, um, but eliminate because yeah, it's way too confusing and doesn't add to the attractiveness of the uh, building. So, Tom. Yeah, thanks. And thanks, Joe, for your presentation. And and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with some maybe slightly alternative recommendations here, which is um I I think you need that sign because I think this is a point of entry for a lot of people who may not be walking down Main Street, but maybe coming from the side. And I think that you have an opportunity to showcase your business from there. And so I would keep this sign. Um, that said. I'm just as comfortable with you repeating what you have on the front here on the side, which is high level, general, you know, great cuisine, serve with love, cool. That's great. That's a good message. Um, my other recommendation is that what you'll see at many places, and I think, you know, we talked about the bakery across the street and all these other places, they use the windows and you have plenty of square footage here. I know this facade. Um, to put some items maybe along the base of the windows, right? So people at a distance will see this is a cafe and they have a certain kind of cuisine. Let me check it out. And as they walk closer, items that are smaller, that are on the glass, you could list them across the bottom somewhere in a very elegant way. And as you get closer to the building, you can see those things. And therefore it's okay to list omelets, parfaits, paninis, et cetera, in smaller type along the bottom of those windows in a very you know clean way that people, when they approach the building, can see from the outside what you have inside. But you don't need to broadcast everything from far away is kind of what I'm saying. So I would, I would say I would recommend you keep the sign all the way along this facade. I would recommend losing the type and finding another location for that within the glass on this facade here. Could I just go to the front uh, facade? Um, I just, sorry, now for my own benefit, I want to see the, see the, the difference. And that says like naturally, yeah. naturally healthy cuisine served with a heart of welcome. Yeah, that's cute. Correct. Yeah, yeah. agree. That would be so much better. So I just piggyback on what you said, Tom, about putting the small lettering, which I think we suggested another time. But uh, how about putting it at the top of the window? Like we, you, you suggest the bottom. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think either way. I mean, the bottom's a little more out of your, you know, not in your face. But yeah. I, I mean, I think. You know, I, you'd have to see what you can see with the railing there right. and it's a judgment yeah. call and I'd let you kind of make that decision. But I feel like it's slightly more elegant and pedestrian friendly if it's down at a, at a slightly lower level, just right. from yeah. my experience. But again, see what you can see when you're standing on that walkway outside of the railing and make that judgment call. But, um, but I think that type could get way smaller because it's for an audience that's much closer. Right, it's different than the broadcast that you have at the top. So, um, my sense is you can have all that text and it'll still look elegant because it'll be much smaller and more considered. Mm -hmm. Erica, did you have a comment? Yeah, I, I concur with the fact. Um, I think that the the banner should continue to be three feet deep and wrap um, all of the sides. I think that that is an, I think Lindsay said it, a nice unifying element. And I think that it also, um, you know, meeting your, the height of the, the banner, um, that your neighbor has for their signage at, um, the hair salon is, is important for consistency as you move across. Um, I, I think that the, the, the suggestions about, changes to the information that's shared on the banner. I could concur with those. I think I'm a little less um, concerned about that than my, my colleagues are here. But um, the issue that I want to raise is that there's a lot of fonts. This is just the Coronation Cafe. I think that's a really nice, bright, bold, exciting logo. Um, and then naturally healthy cuisine is a different script and they're right next to one another. 
Um, and then the, the, the menu list on the other side is, is yet another sans serif font that's different from cafe. So how to manage that um, is my question. And I, I don't know if my colleagues have any opinion about it, but I feel like it's, it's busy just because there's a lot of different uh, font types to manage as, you, as you're reading all of the information. Well, if we eliminate that, the sort of the menu on this side, that would take away that particular. That takes away one, yeah. yeah. And, and then move there. Could, and then could the script that. be the same as coronation? Yeah. yeah. That would help a bit. Hi, Tom. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that was my, usually this is my domain to critique typefaces, but I was hoping someone else would bring it up, but I didn't want to be too big. Um, I, do th I do think ca the cafe type that you have uh, that's written under coronation is a great typeface. I'm guessing that's like Gotham or circular or something like that. Um, and I'd probably use that uh, on the glass with the names of the foods that you're using for that would build consistency. Um, and I also agree that the, the scripts are different enough um, for us to recognize. So it might be something you want to think about unifying those scripts or instead of the script you could use that light delicate um, um, cafe type that you have there and that might that's also delicate it's also friendly and it also might work okay. in that case so it's just something i'd study you know how do i simplify the the number of typefaces i'm not against having many typefaces i just think these are competing with each other and just to be cautious can i ask a question about that um, when I look when I look at the uh, the logo um, coronation, and then I look at what I'm showing you there, naturally healthy cuisine served with a heart of welcome. Um, do I hear you saying that that those scripts are are quite different? They might my look my, my glancing at them. I think they're the same or very close to the same but you've studied a lot more of these things than i have yeah no they're they're different um i, I mean i don't i don't i don't think they're different enough that a lot of people would recognize it but i think i think you have an opportunity because you're using a script to just use the same one and i check it for legibility i think it's it's nice to be consistent with your with your typefaces if you can um and again, there might be certain letters that are harder to read um, with the coronation type you have versus the other handwritten type has uh, much more clear letter starts and ends. So it might be more legible. So, I mean, I'm not against having those two scripts. I just know that they're different and I would encourage you to see what would it look like if they were the same. Yeah, and if I could reiterate, I think that what we're asking for is would you, ask your assigned designer to lay it out with a series of iterations, one of which would be to use naturally, to, to, to write naturally healthy cuisine served with the heart of welcome in the same font that you're using to write coronation. And then try it with the same font that you're using to write cafe um, and see if one of them is, is clearer than either of these, than, than, sorry, than what we're seeing now. for consistency's sake. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I would I say for, it. not for approval, but for at least my opinion is that yeah. I don't need to see that to approve this. It's just a recommendation of something yeah. that potentially- Agreed. Okay. Good. Agreed. Sure. Good. Yeah. Sure, I no, I, it's a good recommendation, I think. I thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. So is this a one of a kind or is Coronation Cafe a shame? <laughs> Or is this the is this the only coronation cafe? Are you the owner of this, or are there other coronation cafes? I, I am the owner of this. Um, okay. There is there is it's not a chain. Okay. At least yeah. not yet. Okay. All right. Yeah. Because if it was, then we would have a different discussion. I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Tell me what a grillatia is. Oh yeah, it's um. <laughs> um I have to call my wife here, but um. 
it's it's uh, it's kind of like a tortilla, punk like a punky shell tortilla, and it's actually gluten free. Oh, good. and it's am I saying that right? My my daughter's here and she knows some of these things, and it's yeah. So we'll so we'll like cook the chicken that's inside it, and then we'll throw it on a panini press and. Um, I'm gonna have the nice grill lines on it and stuff like that. So it's yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that explains it or not, but it was an attempt. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for asking that so, question. Yeah. Getting so hungry. I just had one more thought. Um, yeah. I also am not opposed to the message on the front that says, you know, the healthy food, healthy cuisine is part of welcome. But I also want to just throw out there that I don't think it's necessary um, to have that message. So I think it's um, that's definitely like a personal business decision. Um, I agree with everything that's been said about the type font. And it's it is maybe a subtle difference. But for people who are trained to look at this kind of stuff, it is noticeable. So and and it's one of those things that just like subtly your eye gets like relaxed by seeing things be consistent. Um, but it, you know, as you're, as you're reducing the amount of information on the other side, you might just think about like, what do we really need to say, um, over here? And I appreciate the kind of like friendly gesture of it and kind of giving a little more information about what you're offering. But I also think that, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that's, is, is less more is the question. So, sure. Um, just as you're considering it. I think it's fine the way it is though. And um, I'm excited to come try a try a bunch of this stuff. The, the grill what was it? Grillatia. Grillatia. Yeah. So you kind of see the, the, the tortilla word on the end of it. Yeah. Um, it sounds delicious. But yeah, elements off the grill and thrown across the peony press. Yeah. Anything else? Any other suggestions? Um Okay, Maureen, then we're, uh, we're offering the, su uh, the suggestion of considering um, comparing fonts. Um, and then I th think the majority suggested not to have that strip of various menu items on the side. Am I, am I correct on that? Is that how we? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so I guess if you, um... You could uh, mimic the front the front sign on the side, mm -hmm. um, or you know, Lindsay suggesting you know if perhaps less is is more. So having uh, like a negative space in the white without that sentence um, could be another option, um, and then keeping the banner height at three feet, um, and then. Look into um, whether you know you want to consider um, having providing um, lettering at the at the bottom or at the top of each window, um, indicating the different men menu choices, um, and then you could you know you would choose uh, if the bottom or the top would make sense um, you know based on maybe the fence and other um, existing factors that um, you know may uh, prevent uh, viewing of, of, of that messaging, but um, try to keep it, you know, pedestrian friendly um, as people walk by. So you, you want, you know, pedestrians to be able to see that lettering. And then, yeah, um, Catherine had mentioned um, about um, doing, I, I was gonna say, do an experiment, have the sign designer test out the different scripts um, of, so like the um, naturally healthy cuisine may be one script served with a heart of welcome, maybe a different script. And maybe even the coordination be could be a separate script. So seeing those, fi figuring out which, uh, choosing, you know, one and being consistent all the way through. And if there's a variety of different other scripts, um, testing those out to see the differences. And then include it, and then maybe even doing a test of um, this the letter the, the typeface uh, for a cafe. Did I get it? I think so. I didn't see that that when you look at the sign that one naturally healthy cuisine would be one script, uh, and then the other 
another one on the other side. Is that what you said, or is that what we agreed on? I'm, I guess I'll on. need maybe Tom or uh, a member to clarify. So, is that do you feel that naturally healthy cuisine is one script, and then what's another so. different script? Is that the um, coronation? You know, the the coronation is different oh, from the natural. Oh, okay. So the sentence is one script. Yeah, yeah, coronation yeah. is a separate. Okay, okay. I'm right. sorry. Yeah. I got a little confused. Okay. Yeah, okay. But the the two should perhaps be consistent, That's although yeah, maybe compatible. maybe it's not. Um, right. yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other comments for Maureen so we could pass this on? If not, do I hear a motion that we um, recommend the signage? Uh, Tom, do you move? Okay. Erica, do you second? Okay. I do. Okay. Then let me go through the uh, attendance here. Uh, Lindsay, yes or no? Yes. Okay. Um, Erica? Yes. Tom? Yeah. Catherine, yes. And Catherine, uh, our other Catherine Davis is not here. Yeah, so. she left. Yep. Okay. All right. Very good. Well, thank you, well, Joe. Good luck. <laughs> Be nice and to I, see I, something at that corner. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Joe, I'll type up this memo and um, email you a copy and, and then provide it to inspection services because I believe you're waiting for like a, an article 14 approval and then building permit applications and stuff like that. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Good luck, Joe. Good luck. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, everyone. Okay. All right. Did All right. folks want to approve the meeting minutes sure. that, that I did provide? Yeah. Did it, okay. anybody have any questions, uh, corrections on the uh, minutes? I had read them, but it's been a while. Can we approve the minutes? Or do we want to <laughs> I'm back next time? I'm fine with approving the minutes. All right, Erica, do you approve, move to approve the minutes? And what were the dates? December 13th and February 15th. Okay. I move to approve the meeting minutes of December 13th, 2021 and February 15th, 2022 Very as good. written. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. I'll second, okay. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 I, I wasn't present, but I can say aye. Okay, then you didn't say aye. So it'd be Erica and Tom and I, um, and you would abstain then from that. Uh, do we have any um, public uh, attending oh, tonight? Maybe? I will check, I don't think, no, we do not. Okay, all right. Is there any other? We're so business? popular. <laughs> not a, we're There's not a big a school committee meeting happening tonight, so everybody's oh, yeah. rushing oh. over there. I was wondering why Hilda wasn't here. She's... What's it about? Our new school building. They're proposing the education plan for yeah. for discussion. So what kind? Yeah. What high school or elementary? Or? Elementary. elementary. Yeah. Elements, right? You're a Shutesbury yeah. resident. Yeah, new elementary school. Plans are in the works. That's right. It's going to be a big project, getting bigger by the minute. I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> Maureen, you're still recording. Uh, yes. Oh, oh, do we want to adjourn? Uh, um, yes. Yeah. I yes. do. I hear. I move that we adjourn the meeting. Is anybody uh, opposed to that? Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. We've adjourned the meeting. So that means you turn 